Hello, everybody. So I am just back from holidays. We went to Mexico and this is being recorded in December of 2021. And I just have to say with this Omicron variant, it was a bit of a crap show coming home. I don't recommend people traveling right now. It's just chaos and I can't wait till the world is normal again. But anyway, I'm sorry it's been so long since I posted, but today I'm going to show you a really quick, fun edit of this studio portrait. And the way that I shot it was just with one four foot octa softbox camera left. Actually, no, this was camera right and a reflector camera left. And that is all. I shot this on my 50 millimeter Zeiss at f5. And my ISO was 125 and my shutter was 1 1 60th of a second. So you can see here that her hair kind of blends into the background and that's because I did not have a hair light, which is dumb. So future reference, make sure you have a kicker or a hair light because it will definitely separate your subject from the background. But I will show you how you can make it stand out a bit more in this edit. So you might hear my cat meowing because I've been away for 10 days and she's super needy, so just ignore her. So the first thing we're gonna do right here in Adobe Camera Raw is bump up our blacks like so. Pull down our highlights because the whites tend to get a little bit blown out. And our shadows, we'll pull those up as well, right about there. And this was just a really basic set I put a backdrop up and a couple of pieces of fabric to make it look like curtains and I'm going to pull my clarity up a little bit just to bring some of that contrast back and that's a good start. So we're just going to go ahead and open this object and as you can see I always open up images as a smart object in Photoshop. Right click, choose new smart object via copy. Do not duplicate that layer because it will just be the same exact layer. When you choose new smart object via copy, you have two completely different versions of the same image, which makes it way easier to manipulate. Let's go into our color mixer and now we're only focused on our subjects. And because the mom's face it has more orange, we're going to go into luminance and we're just going to pull up the luminance a bit. Luminance. And that's the effect. Good enough. Click OK. Alrighty. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and flatten the layers, duplicate it with Command J. And now what I'm going to do is come into liquify because I don't know about you guys, but all of the mothers that I shoot like a little bit of slimming and it is definitely no disrespect but when I do this it's because I've already spoken to the subject the mother in this instance and I know for a fact that they want a little bit of slimming so the size of your brush in liquify directly affects the area that you are manipulating so I'm just gonna pull this in I'm also going to pull the chair in a little bit. Again, you have to keep changing the size of your brush to affect the area. Something like that. I'm not a big fan of her positioning of her knees here. So to affect that area without distorting her wrist, I make my brush really, really large and then I can pull it down and it's not so noticeable. Then I make my brush smaller and I can affect the arm and the smaller areas alike. So we definitely don't want her arm to look distorted, so we'll bring that back. Now, we're gonna look at, for instance, take a peek at her face. So if we choose face number one, I'm assuming this is number one, but we'll see. We're gonna reduce, nope, see that's the daughter so we're gonna leave that at zero and we're gonna change this to face number two and we're just gonna reduce the width of her face and her jaw 
and then come in and I'm just gonna oh so gently reshape her face a little bit to perhaps alleviate a bit of that heavier look also we'll just make her ear a little bit smaller and that's pretty much it it just gives us a nice base from which to start from click OK and then you can see the before and the after and now what we'll do is grab our dodge and burn action go to our burn layer make sure that our flows at one we're just gonna zoom in and now what you can do is affect that little bit of extra flesh right there by darkening it down so you're not really altering it you're just minimizing it and sculpting her jaw like so okay so new blank layer I'm just gonna zoom in and all I'm gonna do here is try and blend this little bit see how there's a definitive line here so what you can do is choose a darker area like this I'm choosing that as a sample area and then I can come in here and just darken this down a bit but you got to be careful with that tool because it's a damn pain in the ass so let's try this one and that's all we're gonna do and that'll just help blend that portion so that it looks like it blends a little bit better and it takes away some of the attention from perhaps the more, you know, chunky parts of her face. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is grab a just a basic brush. I'm gonna bump my flow up to 41-ish. I'm gonna paint some more hair back here. And then you choose another color, a lighter color, and this will just help create the illusion of more hair strands. Don't forget to make your brush a little bit smaller, and then when you come in and start really defining those hair strokes, it's not going to look incredibly strange. So that's just a basic way to get the hair to look a little bit more cohesive in that area and also those lighter strips separate the hair from the background a little bit better so we're just gonna go ahead and merge these layers together and I'll show you the before and the after so that's a pretty good start and I guarantee you that mom is happy with that okay go ahead and flatten duplicate that layer and now what we're going to do is come into our frequency separation which is part of my retouch set you can purchase it at nikkiart.ca choose your low layer go to your mixer brush and I always have my flow around 27 percent and make sure that your sample all layers is not turned on because it'll look really weird and then little circles and this is great because it maintains all of the skin texture including her freckles but all the while it kind of merges all of the different color casts and different color tones that you perhaps don't want in your image but this is a really great way to blend everything together so little circles again adjust the size of your brush 
to affect the area that you're trying to edit and it ends up looking pretty good. So something like that. We're looking at the little girl here now. You can see the total different colors within Braylee's skin compared to her mom. So Braylee's much more blue, definitely blues and reds and purples, whereas her mom is, she's got more of a kind of orange and a natural, um, what we would say is a more of a realistic skin tone. And Braylee is a brand new person, so her skin is definitely less subjected to environmental and weather. So she's a little bit more, you know, new and perfect, like we all wish we were. But we're just going to use the frequency separation on Braylee as well, get rid of some of that, you know how you can have that kind of vascular blotchiness from being cold or all that other fun stuff that it is to be human. Okay, so this is pretty good. I don't usually concern myself too much with over smoothing because it all comes back once you create highlights and shadows. This is a really great tool for adding in darks and shadows as well. It's very, very strong and it has so much power. I just love it. So we've really made mom look a lot younger, which is not always a bad thing, but that looks pretty good. Okay, zoom out. And all we're gonna do is just reduce the opacity on that to bring back some of the natural skin. So we're looking at about 60%. So that's before and that's after. And now we're gonna go into our dodge and burn again. Click on dodge, make sure you're on a regular soft brush. I'm gonna put my flow around six, five, six percent. And um, I'm gonna address the hairs all over Braylee, but right now I'm just gonna focus on getting a little bit of light in her really blue eyes and a little bit of the dark circles gone around her eyes as well as just emphasizing her eyelids. A little bit of a dot on her nose and her upper lip and same thing with her mother. I always try to put lip gloss on everybody just because it really does help with highlights as well as highlighter. So if you have like a gold or a shimmery highlighter, if you brush that all over their, you know, um, highlighted areas and stuff, it really helps with editing. Not even gonna lie. So as I'm doing this, you can see I'm really zoomed in, so I have to zoom out so that I can get a better picture about what I'm doing. And it's a lot like traditional painting where you take a step back and you look at it from afar because you're gonna see a lot more stepped back than you are close up. So you can see by doing this, we're adding back a lot of the contrast that when we use the frequency separation, kind of removed it. Same thing with the edge light for the hair here. If you really focus on that, now you've got some really cool separation like that. And go to my burn layer and just start darkening down some of the shadows, which will help define and add more contrast again.
Okay, that's pretty good. Close the group before and after, and we're just gonna reduce. I'm gonna open it again, and I'm gonna reduce those highlights down individually. And that's before and after. So that's nice and subtle, looks pretty good. Flatten it. And now the next thing that I'm gonna do is duplicate my layer. I'm gonna go into Filter, Blur, Gal blur Gallery, Field Blur. So once in Field Blur, I'm gonna pull this up to my subject's face and put it at zero, add another pin, zero, zero. And what this is doing is it's telling Photoshop that all of these areas that I'm putting the blur at zero, I don't want any blur whatsoever. But when I come up here now, I can add it, add it, add it. And every pin that I add adds a specific amount of blur to the background. but it should keep our subjects pretty, pretty sharp because that's our intention, right? Like we definitely don't want them to be blurry or out of focus. I'm just gonna go ahead and click okay. So be, the reason why you duplicate your layer is so that you can mask off the areas that it might've affected that you didn't. Like I can see it on her here. So just add a mask, use a black brush, and then you can come in and gently paint that effect off the areas where they might have been a little bit too strong. I'm not a fan of doing this. I don't do it very often, but occasionally, like for instance this, I had the subject sitting a little too close to the backdrop and those other elements, so it really leaves me no other choice except to do it this way because I like to have a bit of bokeh so that's before and after. Do you see how that blur is added? Okay, new blank layer. Now I'm just gonna sample, make sure that I'm on a soft brush. I'm just gonna sample a background color. And now I'm gonna come in and paint that directly over top. And in addition to the blur that I just added, this will soften it a little bit more and make it look a little bit more cohesive. I'm only at 6% flow, as you can see. But if we start painting here, it kind of adds a like a magical kind of misty feeling to the whole portrait. I'm going to use this color and just come around the edges of Braley. So, and then for this color, I'm going to sample a lighter color of the mother shirt and just add a little bit of mist up here like that. This color here, I'm going to go into my color picker and I'm just going to pull it straight up, which is lighter. give the illusion of a little bit of top light. Like so. And I'm going to add a layer mask and just make sure that I paint that off of our subjects if it got onto them. Okay, so before and after just gives a little bit of misty magic to it and reduce that a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and flatten and I know I've had so many photographers tell me, why do you flatten? It's so destructive. Honestly, it's how I've done it forever and it works for me. Okay, next thing. I'm using a dark color. So one of the darker colors in the images, go to our gradient. I'm gonna click the dither 
And then on my layer mask here, I'm just going to oh so gently paint that off our subjects about here. So what I'm trying to do is create more of a vignette and a focus point on the subjects because it will help them pop out of the picture. But at the same time, all of this really down here, I could crop it, but it's my experience that people prefer images, like especially portraits that are more like this, that are show more of a story in the whole environment as opposed to just cropping them right in. They're a little bit more impactful. Click on properties and if you don't have your properties here just double click on your mask and it pops up. Go ahead and flatten and now what we're going to do is do another dodge burn layer and we're going to focus on defining the features of our subjects. So zoom all in. So once again on Ayla, who is the mama, we're just going to reduce the size of our brush and we're just going to come in and just refine her makeup here. And this isn't something that everybody will want to do all the time. I just know in my experience that, especially for portrait clients, they don't always come in with professional makeup done. So it really does help if you have the ability to touch up their makeup, refine it, just make them a little bit more glamorous than perhaps when they came in. And the eyebrows as well. Just darken them down a little bit. Like so. And a little bit in the crease of her mouth. Click on our dodge and we're just going to come in and lighten a little bit in her eyes, a little bit on her eyelids, and a little bit on the brow bone. like that. All right, make my brush smaller and just do maybe a couple individual hair strands back here. Once again, focusing on separating all of that out. And again, if you do this, make sure you use a kicker light or a hair light because it will make your life so much easier. All right, so close that out before and after. See how it just emphasizes the details of her eyes. Okay, I'm going to duplicate my layer. I am going to come into Alien Skin Exposure 4. And as always, it defaults on the last one used. So if I hit my space bar, that's the before and that's after. And this image I feel like really did need an additional bunch of warmth added to it, which I did add. We can pump up the yellows a little bit, um, pump up the oranges in luminance just to pop that out a little bit. Now the vignette on this one is reverse vignette, so we're just going to create a regular vignette. And then in our curves we're going to pull up on the black point which adds a bit of matte and makes it look a little bit prettier. You could increase your gold but be careful in alien skin I find that it's super powerful so I don't typically like to do it in this one. Pull up the blacks, pull up the shadows, pull down the highlights a little bit that's before, that's after. So you can see that it definitely improves the image. So if we zoom in, we're gonna see that there was a lot of sharpening applied. So you can see how much sharpening, compare that to that, right? So what I like to do is delete that, duplicate that layer. I have a healing brush here and I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna start getting rid of these stray hairs 
And if you do this after you do frequency separation, it ends up being a little bit easier and quicker. Because frequency separation will have already softened up a lot of the lines and things like that. Okay, delete. So now we can go to filter exposure four and it'll just apply the last filter that we had used. New layer. I'm just gonna sample this and just come in with a smaller brush and soften this dark portion of the backdrop around them. So it doesn't look so sharp compared to the rest. I'm trying to figure out, oh, that's a book. We don't really need that. So we'll minimize these. Like so. See how it softened it? It's just a bit better. I'm going to come into my curves adjustment. I'm going to create just a contrast curve before and after. And then the next thing what you can do is come into your selective color, go to your blacks, and now start playing with your color toning. So if I add some red in, a little bit of yellow and maybe deepen it a smidge. Come into my neutrals. I like to do opposite, so I'm going to pull in my cyans and maybe a little bit of blue. And if we go to our whites, the whites already look really blue. I might actually go yellow instead, so you can see the yellow areas that it's affecting pull that down. So if you go back to your layers and you turn it on and off, you can see how you have affected it. And I actually like that. It's not too bad. So I think what I'm going to do is choose a warm color somewhere in the gold, something like that. Gradient, change it to radial, pull that up here, dither, and reduce the opacity down to about here. Perfect. Easy peasy. And now I'm going to use my cherry cheeks and lips from my retouch set and I'm going to give the girls a little bit of rosy cheeks. Not too much though. So you can really see how Braylee almost looks blue compared to her mom. And there is a way of fixing that, I'll show you. So without getting rid of these quite yet, I'm going to put a new layer over top and change my blend mode to soft light. And I'm going to sample one of the peachy colors in mom. And I'm going to come over to Braylee and just paint that over these bluish areas of her skin and it should usually this will help get rid of the cooler skin tones because even though that's really who she is at this point it just looks nicer if their skin tones are a little closer together so if we reduce it a little bit now we can see that that looks better so that's before, see how purple it was, and that's after. So let's go into our lips. Paint the 
lip color onto mom and a tiny bit onto Braylee because she's got good colored lips already. Have you guys noticed that as you age, your lips lose color? I know mine are like no color at this point. It's so ew. Okay, I think that's good. We're going to go ahead and flatten like so. And then what I usually do is I go into my levels. And do you see how my histogram, there's no information directly to the right? I just pull that up a bit because I don't want my image to be super dark. I'm going to leave the black because I want the matted out or muted blacks in this. If we go into our blues and I pull this to the right, do you see how it adds that yellow in? So you have to be gentle with this one. You want to add a little bit of warmth, but you don't want it to overpower the image. Okay, so let's just take a look. That's before and that's after. Flatten. And I hope you guys liked this. Super quick, super easy. Let me know in the comments below anything that you would like to see or if there's anything you felt I could have done differently. As always, join my Facebook group, share your images there, and I'll see you in the next video.